And in general, a medical oncologist like me has generally three toolboxes. The first toolbox that most people are sort of afraid of and commonly know of is chemotherapy. The next toolbox is endocrine or hormone therapy. Some breast cancers use lady hormone receptors to help themselves grow. If you could get rid of what those receptors are binding to to help them grow, you can drastically harm that cancer and cut down its dividing rate. Now in breast cancer, there are generally two strategies to do that. There's a strategy where we can bind the receptor and when we do that, the estrogen can no longer get inside the cancer cell where it needs to go. And then there's a second strategy where we can block the enzyme that turns pre-estrogen into active estrogen. And when we block that enzyme, a woman isn't really meaningfully making a whole bunch of estrogen anymore. Now for a woman that's gone through menopause, either of these options is fine. But for a woman who hasn't gone through menopause, we generally go with the estrogen receptor blocking strategy. The strategy where we get rid of the estrogen has a serious toxicity associated with it that only happens in premenopausal women. For premenopausal women, we use a drug generally called tamoxifen. That's a pill that a woman would take every day by mouth for generally a period of five years that blocks the entry of the estrogen into the cancer cells there are two serious side effects that women hear about that are worth talking about with women up front. The first one is blood clot. That's when you get a clot in the major vessels in the legs or in the arms. Fortunately, the rate of this happening is very, very low. In the studies we have, it shows that it's about 2 to 3 percent overall. And it turns out most of those women happen to be obese or smoke or have a family predisposition of some sort for blood clots. So we can identify the patients who are generally at higher risk for this event and maybe use different strategies as required. So the other major toxicity that really only happens in women who've gone through menopause is endometrial cancer. So you're like, great, I'm taking this medicine to prevent breast cancer and then you're gonna give me endometrial cancer. But fortunately, there's an early warning indicator. For most women, there would be some sort of dysfunctional bleeding and if that's brought to the attention of the doctor, it's investigated and something can be done definitively about it at that point. And finally, aromatase inhibitors. These are generally medicines that are also pills that are taken once by mouth and like the tamoxifen are often prescribed for five years. But they work fundamentally different. Because they deplete estrogen, they may be more effective. We've done now multiple studies looking at this in postmenopausal women, and when these two strategies are compared head to head, the strategy where we get rid of estrogen by making it not be produced is the better strategy. On balance, it works anywhere from 10 to 30 percent better, and now there's some evidence that it might actually save more lives. And finally, it turns out to be less toxic. So that becomes the standard choice that we offer most patients who've gone through menopause. So again, common things we might hear about are hot flashes, night sweats. Over time, some women can have a drop in their bone density. Because of that toxicity, doctors like me are very careful about looking at bone density at various times during treatment to make sure that that's not happening. The good news, though, is that these medicines are just as likely, and in some cases more likely, to provide benefit than the chemotherapy. So it shouldn't be taken lightly when a doctor like me offers an anti-estrogen therapy. It's also the good stuff, and it's worth getting through the, the full course of therapy that's recommended for that reason.